Today we're going to look at the Visual Programming Language, which is one of the components of Robotics Developer Studio. So we'll work through just a quick example that allows you to control a robot using an Xbox controller. This is VPL, as you see here. It's got a number of different panels. There's some basic built-in activities that you can see up in the top left that you can use directly. There's an errors window that shows you any error messages that might turn up. There's a services panel down further which shows all of the services that are available installed on this particular machine which are all available for use as part of a VPL program. Up in the top right we've got the project window and then a properties window. So let's start by grabbing hold of an Xbox controller service. We'll drag that over, drop it onto the design surface here and you'll notice that it's got a couple of little things sticking out the side. The pin on the left pointing into the controller block is an input. The pin on the right, the arrow pointing out, is an output. And the round one is what we call a notification, which means that messages can pop out of here asynchronously. Whenever the controller has something to tell you, it just fires out a message. You don't need to send an input message to it. I'll go and get a calculate box from the built-in activities put that over here and then I can take a notification put it into the calculate and it shows me all of the available message types that can come out in particular I'm interested in the thumbstick because I want to use the joystick thumbstick same thing and I want to use that to control the robot so I'll select thumbsticks have changed as my message type having done that I need to put in an expression in here for the calculation. So I'll put left x plus left y divided by 2. I can do the same thing for the left and right motors on the robot. I then need to combine those and I need to send them to the robot itself so that I can control the drive. For that I'm going to grab a generic differential drive. The reason for using the generic differential drive is that I can set this up using a configuration file so that I can use a variety of different robots and I only need to talk to this generic differential drive. Let me drag over a completed diagram rather than spending a lot of time building this. So you can see what this looks like. I've got from the joystick controller itself, I'm combining the left and right values, sorry, the left joystick values. I'm turning that into left and right motor settings, sending it to a differential drive. What I've also done just for convenience here is added a flexible dialog which allows me to display the values of these two left and right power settings so I can see them actually change as I drive the robot. The differential drive, I've selected an existing manifest, in this case an iRobot create simulation so that I can drive the robot around. Now when I run this VPL diagram, it will start up, it'll start all of the services that I've requested, I get this flexible dialog here which shows me the power levels. Currently they're zero because the robot's not moving. Then I've got my joystick controller that I can push the left thumbstick and I can drive the robot around. As I do so, you'll notice that the values in the power levels are also changing. So with a differential drive robot, full power setting the left and the right both to 1 drives forward, setting them both negative drives backwards, and setting them to opposite values spins around on the spot. So basically with that very simple diagram I can drive a robot using an Xbox controller.